Woohoo! I'm back. I was having some technical difficulties. What is happening, my good people? How you guys doing out there in Facebook land? It's me, your homegirl, Adosha Wright, the author of... There they are down there, guys. Check that out. Curly Hair Adventures. And then there's my other book over there, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. So today we're going to just have a really, really, really cool discussion about braid care. Now, braid care is really, really, really important. So school is back in, right? So braids are definitely a parent's favorite hairstyle because once you put the braids in, guess what? You don't have to wake the kids up early in the morning to do any hair, right? Braids are also cool. You know, kids love braids. They're also unisex, so both boys and girls, male and female, definitely, definitely love braids. And of course, they last. They last definitely um, a little bit of time. And then of course, you can wash your hair with the braids in. So braids are definitely, definitely very, very cool. And so today, we're just gonna have a really cool discussion about braid care. Now, before I talk about that, I just want to tell you a little bit about what we got going on this week. So in case you did not know, but tomorrow is the big day. That's right. It is the big day for what? Hold on. I got it. It's the big day for the opening of the textures. That's right. Exhibit. That's right. The art and history of black hair that's right so this exhibit is going down at kent state university tomorrow if you do not have your rsvpn don't worry about it because it officially opens on september the 10th so you'll be able to go in and look at all the wonderful artifacts all the hard work that went into you know putting this exhibit together you'll be able to see it now tomorrow i'll be able to give you a little bit more about it once i'm done you know checking it out myself but for now you know i'm kind of in the dark like you all as to far as far as you know every single thing that's in there but i know um, that if you have this book you will definitely get a taste of what's going down inside the exhibit and so this book it features uh, some of the artifacts I don't think it has every single thing in there but there's a lot that you can find in the book that will be in the exhibit and of course these are some of the sponsors we have a good old Procter and Gamble woo woo and then we also have um, L'Oreal um, we have National Endowment of Fine Arts and we have the Ohio Arts Council. So we've got, it's, it's been some other people. Rev Air has come on to sponsor an exhibit. So this is definitely going to be some history in the making because when it comes to textured hair, eh, we really don't get that kind of pub, if you know what I mean. So I'm really, really excited. And if you haven't, um, you know, got a chance to learn anything about it, I would invite you all to go um, just gander on over, just kind of browse through uh, uh, Google and, and get on over to the KSU uh, website. And then I'm sure you can find a link about textures. So you can just kind of put that in your... Um, uh, in your search engine and then it will populate a lot more about the exhibit all right so you you can also visit dr tamika ellington's page and also the, uh joseph underwood and so um th they are the curators of the exhibit so you can check out their facebook page and they have a lot more to say than i so you can learn more about the textures exhibit and so my book that's right my book um what they don't tell you at the hair salon is going to be featured in their digital uh, green book project. So this is like, that's why I got my hair all colored in case you guys are wondering like, what you got going on, Kilolo? So yeah, so I got some new color in and so um, it's going down tomorrow at Kent State University and that's gonna be at five o'clock. So if you already have your RSVP, I will see you in the place to be. If not, remember the exhibit opens September the 10th and um, I think the tickets are, I think it's under like 10 bucks, I forgot. I think it was like $6. So it's overly affordable to get in so you can check out the exhibit for yourself and it's really, really cool, all right? 
Okay, um, so uh, what else we got going on before I get into the topic, which is going to be about braid care, all right? So um, also this weekend, I am having a good old fashioned paint and sip, and that's going to be painting your nails, of course, all right? And so it's going to be featuring uh, flavors from Chateau Huff. Check that out, that's right. So Chateau Huff is going to um, be here uh, with us here at the Reverend's Design Team. That's this Saturday. It's free, guys. It's absolutely free. And so you're going to learn about four wonderful, delicious wine flavors from Chateau Huff. So there will be a representative here. We're going to be serving the wine to you in a little four ounce. So y'all don't come and try to get your drink a drink on, okay? So it's absolutely free. All you have to do is just call an RSVP right here at the Reverend Design Team Hair Salon. And that number is 216 three two one 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 zero one and it's a paint your nails you get it paint uh and sip some wine and i just want to let you guys know what's going on javante let me tell you i drove an hour to uh, a place called ashland ohio it's about an hour outside of cleveland because a customer said if you're going to buy some cheese to go with that wine you need to go to Ashland, Ohio, because they have the best cheese, you know. So y'all know I took my little ghetto butt on up there, got my little, you know, hoopty, you know what I'm saying, Javante? And I drove all the way, you know, well, I ain't, you know, but you know, I drove an hour to get this cheese, right? Now y'all know I'm from the projects, I don't hide, I ain't no shame in my game. So the only thing I know about cheese, right, is American. Sharp, you know, everybody, grandparents ate sharp cheddar cheese with the, with the, with the uh, saltine crackers. If you was rich, you had, you had uh, rich crackers, okay? Uh, of course, then you got a little money. You got a little Havarte or butter cheese. And if you got really, really swanky, you also had provolone. And then, of course, for your salad, you know, you have blue cheese. So this is all like a little feta, you know, uh, Parmesan. This, this is all the cheese I know, right? Let me just tell y'all, I get there, I'm like, it's like cheese. Heaven. I never knew it was that many kind of cheese. Number one, I did not know. Uh, number two, I did not know cheese was that expensive. Now, I told y'all I'm a Scorpio, and Scorp well, this Scorpio, I can be terribly, terribly cheap sometimes. So you can imagine, I was like $15, $25 for a brick, a little brick of cheese. I'm like, you want to do this? So I don't know what I'm doing, so I reach out to one of the reps and ask them to like introduce me. Tell me how this is going down, because I don't really know about wine and cheese. When I go to a restaurant, they already have it, you know, on a little board, you know what I'm saying? So the lady takes me on this, this tour, and she's telling me, first you have to have some wine jelly. I'm like, I'm sorry? I know about jam? And I know about jelly. You know, Flavor Flav, you done jumped out the jelly into a jam. That's all I know. Okay, maybe some preserves. But other than that, I don't know anything about wine jelly. So we have this, so she tells me about wine jelly and that I have to get this cream cheese and put the wine jelly on top with the crackers. And then she takes me on this huge cheese, you know, uh, uh, tour. And so I'm like, okay, I'll get that. Everything she says, okay, I'll get that. So she said, you just need no more than four, four flavors. Oh, and then you must have some summer sausage. So I'm like, okay, you know, all right. So I'm just like, I'm putting all this stuff in this cart. My arm getting heavy. Oh, and we have some wine suckers. So you can give people some little trinkets for showing up, a little giveaway. I'm like, okay, so throw all this stuff in the cart, right? So I got all this cheese. I have wine jelly. I'm telling you guys, I'm not making this up. I'm at Ashland uh, Cheese Farm. I think that's what it, I, I put a little post up there. I'll, I'll post some pictures of my nail polish up there. What's going on, Rashida? And so, uh, so I, I have all of the stuff. I have the crackers. Oh, you must have some gluten-free crackers. I'm like, okay, you've just taken us a little bit too far. But I did, you know, get some gluten-free, you know, crackers. And so she's breaking it all down, right? So I, you know, I got my little cart, my little, you know, little bin, and I put it up there. And, you know, so she says, okay, when you're finished, you can, you know, bring it out. Oh, wait, 
You must have some dip to go with your pretzels because some people can't really eat cheese like that. So we have some dips that have just a little more sour cream than cheese and if they're lactose intolerant. So I'm like, okay, girl, go ahead and I'll throw that in that bag. So now this cart, this little basket is like, you know, filled yay high. I get to the counter, get ready to check it out. Dude! cheese yes wine suckers okay so if you have RSVP for this paint and sip I'm telling y'all now I like to do things swell again I notice I said swell again okay um, not elegant but swell again but I'm telling you uh, this is like kicking it up a notch I have never in my life ever have I spent $200 on cheese. I'm used to government cheese. You know, when you stand in line and you send your cousin to go get the government cheese. Um, that's, how, that's how I get all my little bulk cheese. Man, oh man, oh how I miss those days of government cheese because I'm telling you, $200 for a block of cheese um, blocks. It was several, I know, I'm telling you guys, I was just like, okay, so you know, I, you know, Rashid, I want to put it back, you know, like, $200. Now, I didn't, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you look at the, you know, the price tag? I mean, it's cheese. You know, you go to the grocery store, you're like, give me a pound of that Havarte. You know, and it's, you know, give me a pound of that Provolone. You know, and it's like, what, six, seven dollars? Dude, no, this cheese was like 23, 18. And then, oh, you got to get some hoop cheese. I'm like, hoop as in hoop, you know, boiling, that kind of hoop. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. So she's just getting my little ghetto butt together. So anywho, um, I'm letting you guys know there's going to be a wonderful cheese selection. Now, if you come to this paint and sip, you will eat this cheese. And you will eat those suckers because I spent all that money. So I don't want to hear anything about some, oh, I can't eat cheese. I'm like, just eat the cheese, okay? So it's going to be some wonderful cheese there. Uh, four flavors from Chateau Huff. I'm going to lay out the entire um, a prime collection of the right nail polish so it's going down it's absolutely free we're going to have a wonderful time and then um, my cousin-in-law um, will is going to spend some nice jazz and old school so it's going to be really 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 nice and we're just going to have a really good time make sure you bring your mask okay uh, so make sure yeah I got the real cheese okay so you can just y'all ever heard that uh, song it's um what do you call that? House music. And it's like, I got that cheddar, though. Know? <laughs> I got that cheddar. You know, um, yeah, so I better get, yeah, so that paint and sip is going, that's right. I went out my way. I did not know. Rashida, here's the thing. I didn't realize when I was throwing this stuff in the basket that, you know, I mean, it's cheese. I didn't think cheese would cost this much money. So, yeah, so there it is 200 macaronis on cheese, uh, wine jelly wine jelly um myrtle uh it was merlot wine i'm like mm, i bet you ain't no wine in it but anywho uh so yeah so i got all this fancy stuff and i'm gonna take some pictures and she told me how to um i hope i'm pronouncing this right make a char charcuterie am i saying this right guys charcuterie or charcuterie <laughs> I, i'm sure i'm messing up a char charcuterie or charcuterie or something like that board and so um she just told me how to add some nuts and some olives and break up the color you know all this so i'm gonna do my best all right i'm gonna do my best so i'm gonna do my best this is a perfect segue to talk about braids okay it's uh, particularly um added hair okay so i'm gonna just drop down some uh, wonderful tips um, about braid care okay so we're back at school now even though though this topic is really geared towards parents you know but anybody who have braids I hope you're gonna find this information you know somewhat helpful okay I'm saying it right thank you uh, so it's called charcuterie Char charcuterie it's very fancy I don't know is that French I don't know um, so I'm gonna make this church charcuterie <laughs> 
board uh, on plastic because I have no more money left for the wood. So don't go talking about my plastic because I spent all the money in the right places, okay? I would have ran out of money, y'all. I'm like, oh my God, I made it. Oh, oh my goodness. But anywho, so I'm going to do my best to make this char charcuterie board. Thank you so much, Christina, for getting me together, all right? Okay, all right. So now let's get into the topic about braid care. Um, so with emphasis on um, added hair, now I had my colleague just put one little uh, braid in here just to help for conversation's sake and a little lessons, okay? So let's talk a little bit about braid care. And I have my notes here so I can, you know, stay on point, all right? Um, so the first thing I want you guys to understand when it comes um, to braids, all right? Number one, remember this about braids, okay? Braids are a hair style. Um, they are not in lieu of what you should be doing to your hair at home. So when you put the braids into your child's hair or your hair, you want to make sure that you understand that these braids uh, are a style and that hair grows every day, all day. Now this is important because some people are definitely of the mindset that when you put braids into the hair, you know what, you're good for about, you know, eight to 10 weeks or two months. No, you're not, all right? So um, hair, uh, it, the braids are a style, and styles are, uh, braid styles are good. Three weeks is okay. Four weeks, we're gonna talk about why you're heading into the danger zone, especially when you're talking about children's hair and adult hair. Um, braids are just not good to be left in that long, all right? Um, okay, so first things first, now that you understand that braids are a hairstyle, they're not meant to be left in that, that long. The first thing you wanna look for when you're talking about getting your hair braided or your child's hair braided is you want to look for a braider with outstanding technique like this one here. It's pretty nice. And neat, um, even though this isn't on somebody's scalp, but she definitely doesn't have it too tight. There's some movement there um, on the braid. You wanna make sure that the braider is not braiding the hair too tight. So let's go right into some dangers of braiding hair too tight, all right? So here's what they don't tell you at the hair salon, and this is why I wrote the book. So to help you guys out on an intimate level. So when you braid hair too tight, um, what happens is you're going to stretch this erector pili muscle and you're going to cause um, some, uh, um, some tension going on that can definitely lead to hair loss, okay? Because you're pulling it too tight and then the hair can no longer hold the hair onto the inside the follicle, which is onto the scalp, all right? That's one. Number two, if you pull the hair too tight, you can also pull out what's called the follicle sheath. Now, you guys might notice this when you go to, uh, you see children and they have, or people who have those little white, you know, flecks on their skin, and sometimes you might see the white sheath onto the hair. So the white sheath uh, is coming from pulling the hair too tight, or it could be, Nits, okay, so nits are highly, highly, highly contagious, okay, and so those are the eggs that lice will lay in the hair, and sometimes when you're buying, you know, human hair, it may have nits in it, this is why you have to clean that stuff out as soon as you get it, never take real hair out of the package and put it straight into your hair, I'm sure you guys already know that, but I just felt the need to say that because um, it may have some nits and some other stuff, you know, up into that hair, all right, so again, you want to make sure that your technique or the braider's technique is really, really safe because if you pull the hair too tight, you're going to stretch the muscle, causing the hair to come out because the muscle can't physically hold the hair inside that little hole. And when you comb the hair or you take the braids down, guess what? You got a ball spot, okay? Um, also, if you pull too tight, you will actually pull the sheath. There's a little thin film of a sheath or skin that's encased. The hair sits inside of it, and if you pull it too tight, it'll actually come out of the hole, and when you do that, you're really, really talking about your beginning stages of what's called traction alopecia. So make sure you look at the technique uh, when you're scrolling uh, on all of those, uh, you know, social media feeds. 
Uh, if you can, screenshot it or pinch it, you know, move the, the picture up and see if you see any of these signs of too much tension. Also, um, the, is the braider using that language in their service? Like when you call, um, are they telling you that the braids are tension free? They don't pull edges. Look for that type of language when you're talking about getting braids for your children, also braids for yourself, all right? Okay. All right, so next up, we're going to also talk about braid care. Now, braid care should really come from the braider. So please don't go on to the social media platforms and let that person tell you how to care for your braids. Let the braider instruct you the best way to care for the braids, all right? But there is a general a general rule of thumb uh, that comes for braid care, and the first one is tie your braids down at night, okay? So make sure you tie them down. Uh, number two, watch out for steam, because the steam will cause the, you know, the hair to like swell a lot. So just be careful with anything that's gonna be, you know, wet and moist all the time. Now exercising, that's okay, but I'm talking about really like steaming your hair not good because sometimes that can cause the product to loosen up and dilute and then your hair will start to look fuzzy because remember this is added hair and your hair is um intertwined and they've used products to kind of help sculpt and mold the hair to blend so that it can look as natural as possible and if you're doing things that's causing uh the hair to dilute the product then you're going to compromise the style. So again, exercising, that kind of stuff. Uh, a little, you know, swimming, if you got to swim, they have another product they're going to use for that. But just, you know, just be a little bit careful, all right? Okay. Um, next up, you got to understand that your hair grows every single day, all day. So on this braid style, you can clearly see like this is a very fresh braid style, right? So in about a week, that knot is going to start to slip down and grow out and then another couple of weeks it'll slide down some more and the more the uh, the hair grows out remember the scalp is self-cleansing and so some of the debris that's coming off of the scalp and the product that's that you know they use to put in the hair to blend it that can collect and make lint and so sometimes you'll see a debris that's going to come around the braid. Now you can use certain products that's going to help dissolve. So some of my favorite stuff that you could use are essential oils. Uh, my absolute favorite is satin tame. So you could take the satin tame and you can literally spray it. And the essential oils that are in the product will also help with the itching. It's also gonna help the braid look nice, and it's definitely going to help dissolve or loosen up some of that fibrin that can get dislodged uh, in the braid, whether it's um, a cornrow braid or a feeder braid. You know, it's still artificial hair, and even your natural hair, you're gonna see the same thing. So that's those are uh, three things that are really, really good. So number one, you can use some essential oils that's going to help. And then number two, you can also use um, Satin Tame or maybe your favorite, you know, or whatever the braider is gonna recommend that you put on the hair to preserve the actual style. And then of course, it's gonna take care of the scalp and the debris that comes away, you know, uh, from the scalp naturally, all right? Okay, so next up is, this is one that's really, it's kinda tricky, is how long should I leave the braids in? Now this one, oh, it's just, uh, it gets real, you know, it gets a little touch, a little t um, touchy, all right? So here's the thing about, you know, um, how long to leave braids. And remember guys, um, this is a hairstyle and the scalp is a microbial habitat. So make sure, I, we recommend, I don't care if they're box braids, knotless braids, cornrow braids, plaits, you know, two strand twists, you know, whatever, you add hair, you don't add hair, human hair, synthetic hair. I would not recommend anybody to leave any braid style in past three weeks as a practice. 
Now, if you just like, well, I'm going to be away out of the country for a month or two, and I just don't want anybody in my hair, I, or I can't do my hair, I don't have access to stuff, you know, I'm going to be like on a, an expedition, you know, something like that, um, where you're not going to be able to do any hair, um, then that's okay for that one time or two. But as a practice, meaning every time you get your hair braided, you're leaving them in or you're having your children's braid left in beyond three weeks is a no-no. So let me break down why that's a no-no. All right. So I'm going to bring out. Now, if you have any questions about, you know, uh, braid care, um, even post the video after I, after I um, you know, uh, post it up live. Uh, you can just type your questions in the chat and I can come back through and I can a answer those questions, all right? But the number one reason why you should not leave those braids in beyond the three weeks is because the yeast that the scalp produces. So remember, the scalp is self-cleansing like all the other openings on your body, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth, you know, your vagina, your buttocks. So you have to make sure that you're cleansing this off in a timely fashion. The longer you wait, the more the yeast likes to grow. So that's, I mean, yeast loves dark, moist places, and so do your odor-causing bacteria. So the longer you leave it in, number one, you're going to have more itchy and you're going to have more buildup. Number two, you're definitely going to have more of an odor that's extremely hard to remove with regular shampoo. Even some clarifying shampoos, it's hard to remove the stench away from the hair, particularly if you're doing this as a practice, all right? And then number uh, three is sometimes the hair can become lifeless. And that's the biggest uh, concern that people who do this as a practice, what they find over the years is that there's nothing they can do with their hair except go natural. Because when they try to straighten the hair out, you know what, the hair is so lifeless because it hasn't been replenished. You know, you have to fortify hair like you do your teeth you know, your fingernails, your skin. And so that's where your proteins and all of that, you know, shaping your hair up, cleansing your hair, all of that comes into play. So if you don't do those things, then what'll happen is eventually you'll have to come out of the braids. A lot of people are like, oh, I get because I gotta, I gotta work, I don't know how to do my hair, I sweat too much. And they wear the braids for as long as they can until their edges can't take anymore and the hair is no good. And now they're like, um, I guess I gotta go natural. Yeah. And so, which is a good thing, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Um, but sometimes um, you're just kind of locked into that. Uh, that one hairstyle, you can't do a lot of different things to it because the hair becomes a little bit weak. Um, of course, you should embrace, you know, embrace your texture and rock it whether you want to straighten it out. Some people have never straightened their hair out, uh, never twisted it, so I'm not encouraging you to alter it in any facet, whether you, you know, rebraid it back up or straighten it out. But I'm just telling you, a lot of times, uh, people find themselves forced into those situations when they're still wishing for a little bit more flexibility in their hairstyling, but they can't because as a practice, they've been you know wearing the braids for like ever, never getting treatments, never getting their you know their ends and stuff shaped up. And so over after years and years of doing this, what's happening is now your growth cycle is just kind of thrown off. That's one. Uh, number two, the number of follicles you have per cubic inch, not good. So when you go to straighten out your hair, you're like, it's not worth the money. I have a lot of customers who are like, it's, it's like futile for me to have you smooth out my hair because I've been wearing the braids for so long and when I straighten my hair out, it's so limp and it's, uh, to some degree, it's no coming back, okay? Um, and that's because the hair has been so compromised and now density is the problem. So what's left, then the hair is in good condition, but now you can't manipulate and do different things to your hair because you don't have the density, number one, and then number two, the integrity of the hair is compromised, and that happens on children faster than it does adults. It happens faster on women um, who are probably like over 45 and up 
um, you're going to see a lot of problems. So children and women who are over 45, men included, not really good because when you're, when you're maturing, the follicle is still taking shape. So if the child has not reached puberty, then the, the shape of the follicles and all of the number of follicles, they really haven't blossomed or matured. That's one. On the flip side of that, if you're older, right, the follicles are starting to shrink and now you really don't have any fudge factor when it comes to, you know, manipulating that fabric with braids, twists, you even locks, you know, things of that nature. So please, please, please make sure as a practice that you keep the hair clean and you do not leave the braids in for an extended period of time. I'm going to say anything past those three weeks is definitely going to be a problem as a practice. I got to say it again, as a practice, all right? Okay, and then last but not least, what's really, really, really important, please make sure you treat your hair. That's right. Make sure when you take those braids down, you always give yourself a protein treatment. Why? Because hair is protein. Again, I get people who fuss with me. No, I don't like protein. You can't make me do it. You don't know everything. Okay, remember, you're only going to be 53 once. You're only going to be 25 once because it's at that pivotal moment in your life when you realize that your hair will not do what you want it to do and it's really almost always a result of hair care neglect okay so make sure that when even your children um, there are leave-in proteins that you can use on children like infusium 23 um, you can also use the satin tame there are a plethora of leave-in proteins that are absolutely phenomenal so go ahead on and take a stab at it and go for what you know um, i'm not here to push my product so you know look around ask your braider what's going to be best uh, also males you know including so men need treatments just like you know um girls Boys need treatments just like girls, so this advice is not limited, you know, to sex. It's for hair in general, most certainly not race. So whether you're biracial or you don't claim a race, that's cool too. But just understand that in general, for everybody, braids, when you take your hair down, that natural hair is going to need some replenishment because hair is protein just like your fingernails and they both are made from the same protein and that's called keratin. So this is keratin and this is keratin. So make sure you're using that on yourself or your children if you guys are getting braids in your hair and at the end of the day, you won't have any problem. You can braid your hair till the cows come home. Every now and then you can take the braids out and give your hair a break you know, even if straightening out your hair, you always kind of want to switch things up and then everything will work out all right, okay? All right, guys, so I think I've got you faded. I got you covered. So thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me and this series of Lunch and Learn. And we've talked about braid care. Don't forget, uh, please, uh, if you have time uh, to uh, in your schedule throughout the next few months, to check out the textures exhibit at Kent State University. And it is all about the art and history of black hair. And of course, me, none other than Ki Lola Ladosha, okay? Um, my book is going to be featured in their digital green project, okay? So there's so much more in those exhibits, but I just want to let you guys know that the exhibit is there and it's going to start September the 10th, but tomorrow is the actual official opening date, all right? Um, and then this Saturday, right, we're having the Paint Your Nails and Sip featuring wines from Chateau Huff. Four delicious, refreshing flavors, all right? So uh, make sure you're going to wear your mask. Both events, you have to wear masks. And I think that's about it, guys, all right? You know what I say when I'm always signing out? A whole lot of peace, a whole lot of love. And most certainly a whole lot of hair. And if you ain't got no hair, don't want no hair, can't stand hair. Don't worry about it, guys. Just rub your beautiful, beautiful ball hair. Y'all say I got some new lines in my hair. Got the hookup. All right. Bye.